The one other essential piece of equipment that every video creator needs is a computer to edit. If you're shooting 4K videos, you'll need a decent machine to handle the editing. However, if you're already on a budget and spent most of your cash on your camera or lenses, you'll be pretty limited on choices for a computer that can handle 4K editing. So today, we're going to check out one of the most budget-friendly options that'll deliver a smooth 4K editing experience. This is the fourth generation iPad Air. I've used this iPad to edit videos and even 4K videos with footage from my Sony a7 IV. And I know, a tablet cannot replace a laptop or desktop but hear me out. Editing on an iPad gives you an experience you can't get on a laptop where you almost need a surface or you're sacrificing one hand to hold your laptop while the other is fumbling with the trackpad and keyboard. Not the most comfortable experience nor the fastest when editing videos. With an iPad, you can literally edit anywhere and anytime. You can edit sitting down, standing up, on the couch, in the car, in the kitchen, you get the point. On top of that, if you already have a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, you can still connect them and edit on the desk, but still have that portable experience. Yes, the iPad Air 4 can still connect to a monitor. However, you're mirroring your screen rather than extending to an external monitor. But I'll show you how you can use an external monitor with this iPad to benefit you while video editing outside of just mirroring the screen. Just keep watching. The goal here in this video is to try to spend the least amount of money but getting the most value. If your budget allows for either the iPad Air or Pro with the M1 chip, I'd go for that. Aside from the faster chip, you get the ability to plug an external monitor to your iPad and use it as an extended display, not just mirrored and giving you a much more desktop experience. However, let's go even cheaper. You can pick up the iPad Air 4 from Apple's certified refurbished program, costing just $469. The first thing many of us might think about when the word refurbished comes into mind is used and repaired, not brand new. The case with Apple's program though is very different. Every refurbished iPad has a brand new battery and outer shell. It's practically a brand new iPad to you based on the parts and how you interact with it. You still get the same one year warranty and option to add Apple Care. The main reasons why I'd recommend this over secondhand listings. You get the brand new accessories and the only difference is the box, which does not have the typical image of the iPad and is labeled as a certified refurbished. I can't help but wonder though, is it even refurbished? because Apple doesn't advertise or have major clearance sales when the new models drop. Plus the link in the Apple store is labeled as refurbished and clearance. Anyways, other reasons why I'd go with the fourth gen Air is because it inherited the all screen, no home button design from the Pro, it has a USB-C port and the magnetic support for the second generation Apple Pencil. Which leads me to the next points. First off, with the USB-C port, you can edit directly off an SSD and get a dongle to do file transfers from your SD card. Yes, it can be annoying to have a dongle and SSD hanging around, but an option is to throw some 3M command strips on them and stick them to the back of your case. A dongle on Amazon will probably run you about 20 bucks. Second, Apple Pencil. I'm just going to go right into this. The second generation Apple Pencil costs $130 brand new from Apple or $109 for a refurbished one. Yes, I would recommend getting an Apple Pencil, but to save even more money, you can get a very similar one from Amazon for about $25. Bucks. It performs almost just as well, but doesn't have some of the features the official Apple Pencil has, such as pressure sensitivity. I think that is more useful for artists drawing than it is for video editing. This pencil is also magnetic and sticks to the side of the iPad for convenience. These newer models even support wireless charging while stuck to the iPad just like the official Apple Pencil, for a fraction of the price. You'll need the pencil to improve the experience of making accurate cuts and accurate adjustments when editing. You'll want to get a case for your iPad. I like minimalism and so I decided to get the folio case. However, the Apple folio case will run you $80. You can get practically the exact same case on Amazon for $20 which is what I did and it's magnetic just like Apple's, so taking it on and off is really easy. Last piece of accessory I would recommend is getting a screen protector, but specifically the paper-like screen protector. Not only does it give you the feel of writing on paper, it's also a matte finish, so it reduces glare on your screen, which will help while editing videos. There's also this unmatched experience you get when creating art on technology while feeling like you're just using an old fashioned pencil and paper, and it's only $10 or less on Amazon. So we covered the physical aspects of editing videos on an iPad Air 4 and the accessories you'd need. Let's talk about the other important element, the software. 
If you haven't heard, LumaFusion is probably one of the best multi-layer video editing apps available on iPad. I say one of because another two are Adobe Premiere Rush and DaVinci Resolve. I'm not a DaVinci user, so I can't speak on it. But in the app's description, it does state that if you're not using an iPad with an M1 chip, you might be restricted to some features and to HD resolution. So that cancels this one out since we're trying to work with 4K. Premiere Rush, I haven't tried, so I also can't speak on the experience there. But the main thing is, it's expensive. You have to pay $10 a month for it, and you have to upgrade in order to export. Imagine spending hours editing only to realize you can't export your video unless you pay into the subscription. So that cancels this one out as well. LumaFusion, I can speak on. It's pretty easy to use, and if you've used Final Cut Pro, this will feel very familiar. It has most of the typical editing features you would need, though when you're doing more advanced stuff such as working with masks, it can get cumbersome because you need to do workarounds, but at least it's still possible if you need it. There's also tons of tutorials out there, so chances are it can do most of the stuff you'll need. Unlike Premiere Rush, LumaFusion does not require subscription and it's a one-time purchase price of $30. Because we're being mindful of the budget, consider that going with a desktop or laptop setup, you'll need to fork out the full cost for whichever editing software you're going for, and spoiler alert, add another few hundred bucks to the budget for that. LumaFusion feels polished and just gives you a well-rounded editing experience. I've edited footage for my Sony a7 IV that was 10-bit 422 color, and H.265 HEVC codec. And I can tell you, LumaFusion in the iPad Air 4 handles it with no issues. I've put on a few layers, I've done some grading, and you can see that playback and scrubbing is still smooth. This is a completely different experience than editing on my custom-built PC, where I can't even play back without it stuttering. Yes, there are a lot of factors in place like codecs, specific components, software, but at the end of the day, this out-of-box setup that costs less than $600 is delivering a way smoother editing experience than my PC setup that costs in the thousands and is not out-of-box because you'll need to download drivers and codecs. This iPad setup out-of-box just works and works extremely well. LumaFusion also allows you to use an external monitor to view the video window. Really helpful to get a better visual on colors and details. And yes, this works for iPads that do not have the M1 chip. By the way, I edited this entire video on the iPad Air 4, and I'll drop a comment below on how that went, including how long it took to export. All the accessories and the iPad itself are linked in the description down below. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow it together. Also, if you have any other budget-friendly setups for video editing, go ahead and drop it into the comments below so you can help others too. Thanks for watching.